Social media is a vast pool of infinite space with limitless possibilities for everyone. The ultimate front for free speech, a safe space to express your views. It brings as much chaos into our lives as connectivity and convenience. Or has it become a medium to get attacked, abused and threatened too? Has social media today disrupted more than just the internet game? Some background is necessary before we jump into this discussion. A few days ago, Prashant Nair IAS, familiar to K-Lights as Collector Bro, faced a volley of negative and inflammatory comments for sharing a Facebook post on Hatra's rape case where a 19-year-old Dalit woman was brutally gang-raped. He was called anti-national and rapist for expressing his political stand. People are familiar with the three women in Kerala, Malayalam dubbing artist Bhagi Lakshmi, Activist Sri Lakshmi Arakel and Diya Sana took on a YouTuber Vijay P. Nair who put out a derogatory video on feminists in the street. Several others who are far younger than Nair too are making money and fame thriving on a misogynist mindset. Kariminati has been criticized for his cure for big content. There was Shubham Misra and there is still Hindustani Bao who in all their hyper-masculine glory had put out abusive graphic videos inciting hate and violence against comedian Agrima Joshua after she supposedly insulted Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Ever since the police probe into Bollywood actor Sushant Singh Rajput's death has begun, various social media platforms were filled with deplorable misogynistic posts and many sexist slurs have been hurled against his girlfriend Riya Chakrabarti. Bollywood A-listers like the Biga Padukone were slammed unkindly for supporting CAA protest. She was once again brutally attacked by the social media users when her name popped up in Bollywood's drug case. Anshka Sharma was always blamed in social media with sexist trolls for Virat Kohli's poor performance. Back in 2014, ace tennis player Maria Sharapova faced insulting remarks throughout social media when she was being honest about not knowing Sachin Tendulkar. Parvati Tiruvoth, Rahul Gandhi, Priyanka Gandhi, Shashi Tharoor, comedian Kunal Kamra, the names of people who faced public shaming in cyberspace just got bigger. It was not long ago when the whole nation was shocked by an Instagram group chat titled Boys Locker Room where mostly boys as young as 16 and 17 discussed raping underage girls and objectify them in conversations. All these isolated incidents point towards the hazardous side of cyberspace. And every time someone raises their voice against these sickening minds, they have to face logical fallacies like water battery, a phenomenon that ironically became a trend in social media nowadays. Recent and past events signal that it is time for a relook at our judiciary framework when it comes to regulating social media. What we need is more ground rules and strict laws along with already existing cyber laws to make the owners of these platforms and users liable to unduly actions. Recently, the French Parliament has passed a law that makes it mandatory for social media and technology companies such as Twitter, Facebook and Google to remove hateful content within 24 hours of being flagged by users. Failure to comply could end these companies facing fines of up to $1.36 million. It is time India does something similar. A law against hate speech, misogynist remarks and communal content is absolutely necessary in these sharply polarized times. In their carefully planned agenda to get swift popularity or create a divide among people, many use social media to spew venom against minorities and women. Expecting social media firms to do a cleanup on their own will probably remain a dream. The reason is simple. Hate mongering and derogatory speeches have a huge audience which means more money for the companies. Section 79 of the Information Technology Act exempts Google, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter from liability in most circumstances. This way, the tech giants are allowed to get away without any accountability even if the materials posted on their platforms may have resulted in hate speech or misogynistic remarks. Most of these tech companies claim to have put in place in-house systems to check the misuse of their platforms. But majority of them go unchecked or lack swift response, especially for local contents in regional languages. These challenges can be addressed by regulating social media efficiently and modernizing laws and institutions. The challenges of 2008 when the Information Act was formulated are surely not the challenges of 2020, especially when the presence of Facebook, Google and Twitter reached such high levels. 
Social media is a double-edged sword. There is good and there is more bad. So it is time for someone to make the tech giants and those who misuse these platforms held accountable. It is high time to pull the plug with strict laws and measures.